In this video we'll be demolishing a lean-to conservatory thing on the side of our bungalow and the first job is to get the space cleared as we've been using this as a bit of a dumping ground for storage since we moved in a couple of years ago and while I'm doing that I thought I'd explain why we are demolishing it. Firstly there's no access to it from the house so it's always felt like a bit of an awkward space that we're never likely to use. It's also too hot in there in the summer and too cold in the winter Plus the bungalow itself has more than enough space for our needs, so the extra space isn't needed. And finally, and perhaps most significantly, it's really badly built. There's no overhang on the roof, so at some point someone has stapled on some roof felt to the corners, as if that would help, but it definitely didn't because you can see how rotten the wood is here in each corner. The roof is also a bit leaky in one area, and one of the windows had blown too. So it had to go and we're going to use this area to create an outdoor seating area using the sofas that I built in a recent project video. Link to that is down below in the description box. Before we get started I just want to say I've never demolished a building before so I'm not an expert on this at all but I like to learn by doing and that's what this video is going to show. Please don't copy my methods as it may not be safe. This is not a how-to video, it's a how we did it video. And I say we because one of my good mates Guy offered to come over and give me a helping hand. So let's start with something easy, removing the guttering. And then we can take off these rotten wooden trims on the sides which were just screwed in place. Next we started lifting the caps and undoing the screws that hold the polycarbonate roof sheets down to the joists. I had to get onto the roof to reach some of the screws so I'm being really careful to stand directly over the joists so that I don't fall through. And this move is called the crab walk. There were two different types of glazing bars used here for some reason. These ones had a plastic bit that could just be pulled out. And the others are these metal ones which just unscrew, but some of the screws had rusted so I needed to grind off the heads on one or two of them. We might try to reuse these polycarbonate sheets to make a pergola, depending on how well they clean up. Although these sheets are all different sizes, so it's going to take some figuring out. There's a fascia board at the front which was just nailed to the ends of the joists. And we used a pry bar to lift the ends of the joists which were secured from underneath through the window frames. There's a piece of aluminium to hold the ends of the sheets up to the wall which was held in place with some flashing tape and this was pretty difficult to remove so the mole grips were useful here and later on I'll have to find a way to clean off the residue. Then we can remove the doors and the other ends of the joists were screwed down to this batten that's secured to the wall most of these joists are good for reusing. I think the wood is Maranti. Aside from a bit of rot at the ends, they looked in pretty good shape. Next, we can unscrew the windows that open. And then we wanted to start removing the glazed panels from the unopenable windows, but that proved to be much trickier than we expected. So we've been trying to remove the glazing beads from the windows, but we can't seem to do it without breaking the glass. So I think this is going to be a messy job. I think we're just going to try and attack things with the reciprocating saw next and see where we get to. The great thing about using these carbide teeth blades in the reciprocating saw is that you can cut straight through nails and screws as well as wood. So I'm making some cuts here to enable us to remove more of the frame while Guy continued to work on the windows. I've removed glazed panels from windows before without any issues. Usually it's just a case of removing the mitered beading pieces and cutting through any silicone if it was used and then pushing the glazed panels out of the window frame. But here, the glazed panels had been siliconed into the window frames and the beadings had been fixed in place with silicon and nails too. So you'll see here we're trying to cut away that silicon behind the bead with a knife and then removing the beads which were just fracturing away into little pieces.
Then from the inside, we're cutting the silicon that's holding the panel into the frame and then trying to push it out. But just doing this one window had taken so long and it seemed to be way too difficult and time consuming, especially as there were another 16 windows to do after this one. We'll come back to these awkward windows soon, but in the meantime, we added one of the old roof joists to brace the front elevation of the building just to make sure it wouldn't fall forward. And then we could start removing as much as we could from the side wall using the reciprocating saw. There were some screws securing the window frames to the brick wall, but as we couldn't access the heads of those screws due to us not being able to remove the glazed panels, we used a crowbar to get a bit of leverage and then we can just wiggle it around backwards and forwards and pull it out along with the screws and wall plugs. And it was clear to us here that the brick part was going to be pretty easy to take out, unlike the windows. Here we're cutting this corner post free as again this is a nice piece of hardwood that can be reused for something in future. So at this point we're still trying to figure out what to do about those windows. I wondered if we could cut away the side of the frame to access the glazed panels but that went wrong too. <laughs> I reckon we should just push it all in. Just turn it into a clean up exercise rather than a dismantling exercise. Guy was pretty reluctant to make such a big mess and favoured the more sensible approach of trying to remove the glaze panels and doing it properly, whereas I was a little impatient and just wanted to smash it all to bits. And in the end we both agreed that doing it properly was just going to be too cumbersome, so we made a relief cut at the corner. Then we removed that brace that we'd added earlier and we tumbled it. And this is when we realised just how tough toughened glass was. Smashing this glass on the inside of the brick walls meant that all of the glass would be relatively well contained and easy to clean up. And this glass breaks into beads rather than shards, which means it's not particularly sharp. But obviously we took the precaution of making sure that Dylan was locked inside the house until we could get it all cleaned up just to be on the safe side. With most of the glass out of the way, I can then cut away the frame piece by piece. and then we swept up all the glass. Here's a look at just how rotten the windowsill was. It was pretty much just powder at this point. Now we can concentrate on the other wall, taking the same approach of getting it to fall on the inside of the brick wall so that we can smash the glass. Here's something that I found interesting. Who knew that there were millions of beads on the inside of the aluminium frame around the glazed panels? I didn't. I looked this up and apparently they're called desiccant beads and are similar to silica gel that you sometimes get in packages when you buy things. They absorb moisture and keep things dry. Always nice to learn something new. Then it was cleaning up part two and this didn't take too long at all. Now onto the brick and I started using the SDS drill first and that worked well but we found it much quicker just to use the club hammer and a sledgehammer. So that's what we did. And all of these old bricks and also the broken glass are going to get crushed up and sold on as rubble by a company locally to me so fortunately I don't have to pay to dispose of any of it. 
that was the end of day one and I was really pleased with the progress we had made. Huge thanks to Guy if you're watching by the way, much appreciated. And I spent that evening clearing everything up and hoovering up any bits of glass so that the cat could explore the garden again. A few days later I started removing the tiles from the concrete slab using my SDS drill and they came up pretty easy. I also removed the batten from the wall and I gave the wall a good clean, waited for it to dry off and then filled all of the old holes using a cement based exterior filler ready for it to be painted later. You might have also noticed that there's a radiator on the wall here and the original plan was to get that removed before we took the conservatory down, that's obviously the sensible option. We've got a plumber lined up to do the work but he's just really busy at the moment as are most tradesmen so we decided that having a radiator on an exterior wall during the summer shouldn't be an issue but obviously we need to make sure it's gone by the winter otherwise the pipes are going to freeze up I should imagine. I also managed to get most of that flashing tape residue off the wall using a heat gun and a scraper. So as I said at the start we're going to be using this space for the outdoor sofas and I'm also going to be making some tables to go with them and probably a pergola, possibly with a roof, to go over it and then we're probably going to get a pizza oven too. Originally we were thinking that after we demolished the conservatory we would get some builders in with some pneumatic breakers to take out the concrete slab and then lay down some more paving slabs so that this whole patio area would be on the same level and that would have been great but it was going to cost somewhere between £1,500 and £2,000 and as we have so many other priorities for the bungalow i.e. it needs re-roofing and new windows, we kind of decided that our money would be better spent elsewhere and we can live with having a small step up to this space. We haven't yet decided what flooring we're going to lay down. If anyone has any suggestions, we'd love to hear them. There wasn't really anything wrong with the tiles that were down here originally, but as it was a flat floor, water would pool up on the surface and these tiles would be very slippery. Please subscribe to my channel for more garden projects coming up soon and of course more regular woodworking content too. And if you'd like to help support the channel and get exclusive content, early access to my videos, free project plans and cut lists and a name credit at the end of my videos, you can find links to YouTube channel membership and my Patreon page in the description box below. Thank you for watching.